It's the slogan of the state of Illinois, but it might well be applied to every state in the union. He saved the land of Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln is universally acclaimed as one of the nation's great presidents. And Steven Spielberg's much anticipated new film, Lincoln, celebrates him. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. That's a rule of mathematical reasoning. It's true because it works, has done, and always will do. Joining us now are two authorities on Lincoln, David Von Draley, an editor-at-large at Time Magazine. He's also the author of Rise to Greatness, Abraham Lincoln, and America's Most Perilous Year. Also with us is David Weed, presidential historian. He's the author of The Raising, sorry, Douglas Weed, The Raising of the President. Welcome to you both, Doug, I'm sorry. Hey, thanks. Uh, David, let me start with you. You've seen this film. Yes. Is this the real Lincoln as you know him? I thought it was impossible to get this man on film, but they've done it. They, it is, they captured the charisma and the mystery, which are these two competing qualities of Lincoln that make him so fascinating even 150 like years later. Doug, what do you think about Daniel Day-Lewis's portrayal? I think he was great, and, and uh, I think Sally Field stole the show. Mm. I was told some critics say uh, David was telling me that she was over the top, but Mary Todd Lincoln was over the top. She, she I think, if anything, was a little subdued as Mary Todd Lincoln. I thought she was brilliant. The, the nuance, the, uh, the richness of the portrayals of each of these characters, including Robert Todd Lincoln, were very impressive to me. David, you in your book describe Lincoln as a man of many contradictions. Yes. What do you mean? Uh, he was, everyone saw something different in Lincoln. Some people said he was the most willful man in the world. Others said he lacked a will, a spine. Some people would come and say he's the funniest guy, you know, telling these stories. Other people said he was the saddest man who ever lived. I think that's closer to accurate. Uh, so he would be, he, he would reflect to people sort of what they were looking for almost uh, mm -hmm. as a way of appealing. His, if he was sad, why was he so sad? He was, he lost his mother when he was nine years old, was abandoned in the wilderness by his father. Uh, his closest friend in the world was his sister, two years older. She died when he was wow. a teenager. His whole life was a story of loss. David, you raised a very interesting point. He would reflect to people what they were looking for. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why we remember him so fondly. That's one of the reasons why he was successful at the time. Today, as a president of this country, you can't necessarily choose your messaging because it's all over YouTube, it's all over Twitter, Facebook, social media. Do you think he would have been as successful today behaving like he did back then, Doug? Uh, well, I don't think he'd be successful today because he didn't have the voice and he didn't have the looks. But if, if, he, could, uh, if he could write the script, he could make a president. He was a brilliant politician, and I'm glad that Spielberg shows this. Uh, you know, Spielberg must have been carrying these ideas around mo his whole life because you can see it come out so creatively. It's not a perfect movie, by the way. There's some illogical moments, uh, but uh, as I mentioned, you, you can find Pulitzer Prize winning books with illogical moments about Lincoln. He's hard to capture. But no, I don't think Lincoln would probably be elected today. He was, and he wasn't particularly appreciated in his time, was he? I mean, there were a lot of his critics really loathed him. He, well, they were fighting a war, basically, <laughs> over his views, and hundreds of thousands of people killed. What Lincoln understood, though, was that politics is a game of addition, and that uh, Americans are forward-looking people. And so he was constantly trying to bring people to him, taking the moderate position, and always sketching out where he was leading the country, why they were fighting the war, what incredible future the United States had if it could just get through this crisis. One, one awkward moment at the beginning is uh, Lincoln meets casually these soldiers and they're quoting back to him the, the Gettysburg Address. Mm -hmm. Actually, no one would have memorized the Gettysburg Address <laughs> that early. Lincoln hadn't memorized the Gettysburg Address at that time. Uh, but it's true, half of the nation was rebelling against Lincoln and the other half was divided over Lincoln. So it was pretty miraculous he got elected then, let and, alone and how now. did he get elected then? Because he's very misunderstood. He's sort of this odd character that comes to office. Well, I, I'm anxious to read David's book on that. He Go was ahead. a great, great political organizer behind the scenes. He would let it look as if events were sweeping him along helplessly, 
but he was always looking ahead and trying to figure out, well, if events are going this way, how do I jump ahead and, and get to where I can ride those events? He was very strategic. He, he, he was very logical. Uh, he always explained things in terms of mathematics. I mm -hmm. like that clip that you showed because he was very much about arithmetic and adding things up and jotting down numbers. And so uh, he was a calculator. At what point, I mean, you, you, you talk about his looks. I mean, I was struck by, he's six foot four. So at the time, he must have seemed like seven feet. A very awkward looking man. But I mean, at what point do you think he really became appreciated? Immediately after his assassination, uh, I, we often think what would have happened if he had lived. And one of the things that would have happened is we wouldn't think of him as quite so successful. He had this amazing story where he solved an incredible problem, the war, slavery, and then immediately left the scene on Good Friday, you know, and became the American martyr, the American saint. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, that completeness of that story, in a way, is what, one of the things that speaks to us. All right, David Vondrele and Douglas Weed, thank you both for being here this morning. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.